Hey folks, Nick Corbertson here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple 80s chrome text effect in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. So I'm a total Affinity noob, but I've been using Photoshop forever. I actually made a tutorial on how to make a chrome text effect in Photoshop too, if you'd like to check that out. But yesterday, Affinity Photo went on sale and I took the plunge. I really love Photoshop, but I love saving money even more. Plus being able to actually own your own software as opposed to renting it is always a plus. So here is Affinity Photo. First, we'll select a canvas size. Mine is 1080 by 1080. For our background, I'll click this little checkerboard in the corner to add a new layer, then select the gradient tool and drag it gradient across our canvas. Under type I'll change the gradient to radial and you can click this little gradient palette to change the parameters. I'll change the color to a very dark purple. Super dark purple. You can select insert to add nodes to your gradient or double tap above the gradient line. To get rid of nodes simply highlight them and select delete. Next we'll select the text tool and type out our chrome word. Chrome. If you click these little magnet buttons up here, you can have your layer snap to the grid when centering things. All right, next, highlight your text, change the color to white, and choose a big, chunky font. The one I'm using is Arial Black. We'll center the text again, and now add some effects. In Photoshop, you would double click on the layer to access the effects. Doing that in Affinity Photo just zooms in on the object. The way I've found best to access the effects is to select on the layer, then toggle to the effects panel. From here, you can add all kinds of things. Each layer even has a Gaussian blur that you can toggle on and off and adjust. Just realized I've never said that word before. Gaussian? Gaussian? Gaussian. Thanks, Google. But the effect we want is the gradient. Toggle it on and you can access the controls by clicking on the gear icon. I'll change the angle to pointing straight down and make the signature 80s chrome gradient from dark blue to light, then dark to light again midway down. Next, I'll toggle on the border, which is like the stroke in Photoshop. This isn't the one we actually want because it gives us rounded corners, as you can see here. If you just need a solid color stroke for your object, you can use this, but we're gonna use something different. So toggle that back off and we're gonna go to our layers panel and copy our text layer with copy and paste. Now select the text layer that's lower down on the layers hierarchy. This is the layer we're gonna add our border to. Next, select the shapes tool and from the top, we can add an outline stroke to our letters. Set the width to however thick you want the outline to be. And the cool thing is that you can alter how the stroke handles the corners and alignment. Now with this option, our outline has nice pointy points. If we go back to our effects tab, we can change the gradient to a single gradient going from light to dark. I'll delete some of the points and here is our new gradient for the outline. For a more advanced chrome text effect, people like to use the pen tool to outline this border section of the letters, but that can be time consuming and fiddly. It can look amazing though. All right, so next to add some contrast to our outline, we're gonna click back again on our inner text layer and we're gonna add an inner shadow to it and mess with the parameters until I get something that contrasts with the outline a little better. Now this is my favorite part. We'll grab the pen tool and create the curved reflection of the horizon line. To do this, curve up on the sides and down in the middle, trying to make it all look natural. I learned this technique from the godfather of synthwave retro wave art, Signal Noise. So definitely check out his work if you dig this aesthetic and super fast mode. At the end, I draw a straight line across the canvas holding the shift key and complete the shape. Next, I'll click on the fill palette up at the top and make it the same color as the darkest part of my gradient. To mask this to our text, I'll drag the layer over our text layer. The layer is now masked, but it's applying the layer gradient, so I'll switch the gradient's blend mode to multiply. Now that's already starting to look like some convincing chrome. If you want, you can even go back in later and alter the points of the horizon with the pen tool like I had to do on the letter E. Next, I'll add a little neon because nothing says 80s like chrome and neon. The text has a stroke now, but you can go in and remove that with the shape tool selected. And super fast mode again. So far, I'm really liking Affinity Photo. It'll still take some adjusting to, but if it can handle opening all my old Photoshop files fine, I think I'll make the switch. Okay, so side note, I did just open up some of my Photoshop files and it 
it didn't handle the gradients quite right. So I think if I were to make the switch, I would need to handle that somehow. Maybe I could export the Photoshop document into layers that aren't using the built-in gradient. I don't know yet, I haven't decided. If you made the switch from Photoshop to Affinity, let me know down in the comments how you handled all your old Photoshop documents. To finish things up, I'll select the adjustments icon and select brightness and contrast. Set the levels to whatever looks good to your eyeballs. I'm using 10% brightness, 24% contrast, and I selected linear because it's fun to toggle boxes. Then the last little trick, which is another signal noise joint, is to add a shape over the entire canvas, change its color to gross purple, set the blend mode to screen, and set the opacity down to something like 12%. This just sort of marries all the colors together, and it makes all your darkest colors not quite black, so they pop off the screen a little bit better. And here's our final piece. So to recap, we have our background, our chrome letter interior with the horizon line, our duplicated text layer with our outline stroke and simplified gradient, our sassy neon text, a brightness contrast layer, and our gross purple screen. And that's it. Hey folks, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you're thinking about Affinity compared to Adobe. Is Affinity Photo a Photoshop killer? I don't know, what you think? I hope this tutorial was helpful in polishing up your digital chrome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.